Oh, yeah, I remember this. <laughs> hey, John, what you doing? Oh, hey, I'm just looking through some old vacation photos. All right. Yeah, look, look at it. Check this one out. Mm. This is me when I went to France. Hmm. It's cool. Yeah. Oh, oh! And here's me when I was near the Eiffel Tower. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Eiffel Tower was right in front of me when I took this picture. Yes. Isn't that cool? Definitely. Yeah, <laughs> so cool. Uh, oh, oh! Check this out. A, tr a tree? Yeah, I took this picture when I was right down the street from Buckingham Palace. Oh, you went to Buckingham Palace? Yeah, yeah, this, this was proof. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, and this is my favorite place I've ever visited. I bet you can't guess where this is. I don't know, John, is it uh, the Mediterranean Sea just off the Amalfi Coast uh, on a Tuesday in September at 1.30 in the afternoon? This is 1.30. This is 2.30. What? Hey everybody, I'm Brandon. I'm John. And this is the So-and-So Show. Today we have something special in store. I mean, really special. Did you write a song about your day again? Hmm, maybe, maybe not, I'm not gonna tell you. You don't know. You're right, I don't know because you haven't told me yet. Oh, and I'm not gonna tell you because I don't wanna lose my edge. Unpredictability is the key in today's game. Okay, and the game is... Woo! <laughs> no! Hey, 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 hey! What in the world? <laughs> I got one! <laughs> one point for me! Oh, are we playing Made You Laugh? You bet we are! <laughs> Hello. The goal of Made You Laugh is to make the other person laugh. That's it. I make Brandon laugh, I get a point. He makes me laugh, he gets a point. The person with the most points is the funniest host. Ready? Oh yeah! Go! Hey John, what did the seaweed say when it got stuck to the bottom of the ocean? I don't know, Brandon. What did the seaweed say when it got stuck to the bottom of the ocean? Kelp! Kelp! Hey, Brandon! Yes, John? What's a squirrel's favorite ballet? I give up. The Nutcracker! What do rich squirrels eat? Cash use! Eh? Eh? Okay, a squirrel sees an elephant in an oak tree. Squirrel says, why are you here? Elephant says, I like coming here to eat oranges. And the squirrel says, silly elephant, this is an oak tree. The elephant says, I know, I brought the oranges from home. <laughs> Does it make any sense? I <laughs> know, point for me! Ah. So and so show, so and so show. So and so show, so and so show, so and so show. So and so show, so and so show, so and so show. So and so show, so and so show. So and so show, show, show. Meow, meow, meow. Go away from me, I'm allergic to whatever you are. Oh, woo, woo, woo. Yeah. All right, let's do this. My name is Horvath. And my name is Horvath. And it's time for Bible sizing with Horvath. Yes. Go. One. Fourteen. Uh, pole position. Garden ray. Pumpkin spice. Newt. Chester copper pot. 419. <laughs> roll, roll, roll. You know, jump me down the street. Roll, roll, roll. Point. It's final story time with Khan. Hey everybody! Hi Kellen!
Whoa, you guys are having so much fun. <laughs> yeah. How's it going, Callan? Um, I think you asked how it's going, and it's going great, and about to be even greater. This story is off the chain. <laughs> you'll, you'll get that joke later, because there's chains in the story. <laughs> Anyways, let's jump in. Today's story is from the book of Acts, chapter 16. We're going to take a look at a few days in the life of Paul and Silas, who were leaders in the early church. They spent their lives telling people about Jesus and helping those who were already believers to grow their faith. Now, on this particular day, did you just hear what I... Glad you came. Glad you're here. I know it's getting late, but never fear. We'll get a blow by blow of the Bible story on the Mount Solomon story recap. Kellen! Hi, Mel. My buddy, my pal, my favorite teaching collaborator, or should I say, collaborator? Nope, you shouldn't. Who are we talking about today, Kellen? Paul and Silas. Oh, I like them already. They sound like a duo, like me, Mel Solomon, and my brother-in-law over there, Greg. Hi, I'm Greg. Beautiful, beautiful. Take it away, Kellen. We'll chime in when the story calls for a tune. I expect no less. So, one day, Paul and Silas were walking to a place to pray, and a girl started following them around, shouting, these men serve the Most High God. And she wasn't saying it in a nice way either. She was being controlled by an ungodly spirit. And because of it, there were people using her to make money. This girl followed Paul and Silas around for several days. Finally, Paul commanded the spirit to leave her in the name of Jesus. And it left. But the people who were using the girl to make money, well... They were not happy about that. And they took their frustrations out on Paul and Silas. Oh man, sounds like Paul and Silas were about to have a bad day. Yeah, I, I've had some rough days too, right Greg? 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 My water bed is leaking. Uh, hey, play the song, Greg. Okay. One day I went for a walk, little did I know that I talked to my neighbor for an hour about her toe. Later I ate a pepper, but I didn't realize it was a habanero. My life flashed before my eyes, so I drank a bunch of milk to make my mouth feel better. Yeah. Back to you, Kellen. Yep, that sounds rough. Maybe not as wild a day as Paul and Silas were about to have. The men who were upset at them for healing the girl dragged Paul and Silas into a crowded marketplace. They accused them of making trouble in the city and breaking the law. So Paul and Silas were beaten and thrown into prison. The jailer was told to guard Paul and Silas very carefully. So he put them deep inside the prison and fastened their feet with chains so they couldn't get away. Oh, no, no, no. How horrible can this day get? They must have been miserable. Hey, Greg, play that miserable tune. Greg. Greg! Call the plumber. Huh? What? Oh. Miserable tune, Greg. Play your worst. Oh, that is just terrible. It's perfect. Misery, such incredible misery. Sometimes that's all you get. Wet sneakers, old onions, rude neighbors, big bunions. Sometimes life is the worst. Think that about sums up the story, right, Kellen? Um, actually, no. Instead of wallowing in a misery around midnight, Paul and Silas started praying and singing hymns to God. Even after all the beating and the arresting and the chaining of the feet? Wow! I know! Somehow, they were able to choose joy. Other prisoners were listening to Paul and Silas sing when suddenly, there was a powerful earthquake shaking the prison. The prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. 
the jailer who was watching them woke up and... Greg, stop snoring and wake up! Oh. Oh. Not now, Greg. Oh. Okay. You were saying, Kellen. Well, the jailer woke up during the earthquake and was, well, he was extremely upset when he saw the prison doors open. He thought the prisoners had escaped. But then Paul shouted at him, we are all here. The jailer went to Paul and Silas, fell down in front of them, and he asked them, what must I do to be saved? Oh, I bet I know where this story is going. I gotta sing about it. Greg, Greg, Greg! Doggy pillow. <laughs> I got a new song, Greg. I'm making this one up on the fly. Okay. Sounds good. I bet you can see how the story will end. Paul and Silas finally get their revenge. Make the jailer feel miserable for how he treated them. And everyone escapes, so the jailer gets fired. No, no, Melv, that's not what happened at all. Oh, you sure? Positive. The jailer asked, what must I do to be saved? And Paul and Silas told him, Believe in the Lord Jesus, then you and everyone living in your house will be saved. So Paul and Silas, they were able to share God's word with the jailer. So the jailer washed their wounds and took them to his home. He and everyone who lived with him were baptized. And on top of that, the jailer gave Paul and Silas a meal. Everyone that was in the house was filled with joy and became believers in God. Oh, wow. I was not expecting that. Greg, did you know that was going to happen? Ugh. The next morning, the judges sent officers to the prison to let Paul and Silas go free. The judges also apologized to them and led them out of the prison. The end. Boy, I wish I handled things like Paul and Silas did. When I have a bad day, I want everyone to have a bad day with me. Yeah, but they had faith and found joy. Right, Greg? Yep. Sometimes... You just have to patch up your waterbed and fill it back up. Yes. Well said, Greg. Mm -hmm. Wise words. Thank you. Hey, play us a song to close us down. I know the one. Sometimes life isn't all rainbows. Storm clouds will surely come your way. But that doesn't mean you're always miserable. Storm clouds don't have to ruin your day. Just remember God is with you, and boy, oh boy, you can face anything with joy. Always a pleasure, Kellen. Back to you. Nicely done. Thank you so much, Melv and Greg. Wow. Hey, Paul and Silas really did have quite the day. Yeah, I don't know if I would have been able to have as much faith and joy in the situation as they did. Hmm. It's true. Paul and Silas put their faith in God even in the worst circumstance. They didn't know when they would be let go or if they ever would, but they prayed to God and worshiped him because they knew God would take care of them. And their faith, oh, their faith was on display for everyone in the prison, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, absolutely. I love how the whole jailer's family came to believe in mm -hmm. God. Yep, and God filled them with joy. Yeah. I think we all need a little help finding joy sometimes. Totally. I'll see you guys next time. Bye, Kellen. You know, I think we did a good job having joy on today's show. You brought me a lot of joy. You're a very funny guy. Thank you, John. I think you're very funny looking also. Well, thank you. Hey, what? Reveal the question. What brings you joy? Great question. You know, reading books always brings me joy. Yeah, or maybe playing a really fun game can bring you joy. Yeah, or hanging out with your family or your friends. Mm -hmm. Or watching a beautiful sunset. Yeah, there are lots of ways to find joy. But if it's not coming easy for you, ask God to help you find joy. Or ask someone God has put in your life to help. Yeah, talk about it together. What brings you joy? And we will see you next time. I'm Brandon. And I'm John. And this was The So-and-So Show. Wiggle! You got it? Wiggle! Wiggle!